Hey guys, my name's Nathan and this is my first YouTube video. Um, a bit of a background story around me. Um, I became a Christian when I was 16, 17. So that was about four or five years ago, so I'm 21 now. Um, I became a Christian at Salvation Army and I've been attending there ever since. So yeah, that's my home, that's my, that's my life pretty much. Um, and I've decided to further my studies at Laidlaw College. So yeah, I'm doing a Bachelor of Ministries with a Conjoint and Counselling, so it's a five-year double degree. It's going to be hard, but it's worth it. Um, so I'm in my second semester of that. So if you've got any other questions, just email me or message or comment or whatever. Um, today's video is entitled, How to Tell Strangers About God. Um, <laughs> so yeah, some of my topics will be like um, about God and spreading the news or some will be about the Bible or just topical things so yeah just subscribe and yeah you'll hear all sorts of different things um yeah so how to tell strangers about God um it's quite a hard topic it's quite a hard thing to do you can't just go up to strangers these days and just say believe in God just you need God um most of the people these days, they don't understand that. They don't understand their need for a God. Because um, if you if you need God, then you must be broken or a sinner. And a lot of people aren't willing to accept that. Um, probably due to pride and other reasons. But that's where it becomes hard. That's where the issue lies. So you can't just yell at people and preach Christianity, you have to, I think another word for evangelism is discipleship, is teaching, is loving. Um, if you disciple someone, you've essentially evangelized. You've gone from one point in their life, not believing or being a weaker faith, you've gone to another point in which they've believed in know more about God so evangelism isn't just about saying you're Christian it's actually about building their faith and showing that they can live out their faith in the 21st century world we live in today and it's not easy to live in this world it's full of sin full of temptation and that will probably be another topic so how to evangelize is through relationships is through friendships um, as my officer, or pastor, as um, other people say, or priest, or minister, or whatever, whatever. But in my in the Salvation Army, we call them officers. So my officer, he says, if you don't feel connected, get into an engaged group. Get into a small group with fellow Christians who can encourage, support, and help you through daily daily things and weekly life. And um, yeah, just. So I think the best, and I think that's the best way to do it, is if you've got a church of 150 people, one person can't take with that many people, not even two. You need a lot of people to take care of 150 people. And yeah, one-on-one -on -one counselling and one-on-one -on -one, um, discipleship is needed a lot. But also in a lot of sense, in a lot of times, it's also just friendships that's needed. It's people just need a friend to go to. They need someone to... To accept them for who they are. So if you're wondering why your friend's not opening up to you, ask yourself if you're persevering with them. Are you asking them the hard questions? Are you pushing them to actually open up to you and say, Are you okay? What is wrong? You can trust me and prove that you can that they can trust you. But back to the question, how to tell strangers about God? I wouldn't. I would be very careful. Um I mean, of course, there's always times and where God leads, definitely. God God can use anyone, anytime, anywhere to tell someone about God. I mean, it often takes about seven plus times for someone to hear the gospel and then start getting interested, so anytime helps. But be careful. You can't just rush the message, rush the good news down their throat and be like, oh, my job's done. No, no. Evangelism is a lifestyle. Discipleship's a lifestyle, it's a 
ongoing thing. Maybe you can't meet up with these with every single person weekly, even fortnightly, but if you meet up with them once a month, once every three weeks, once every two weeks would be good, would be better. Um, but if they can trust you to that, they can go to you in, in the hard times, they will. They will. And so evangelizing isn't so much about just talking to strangers. It's more about being open, be loving, be caring to your friends and to your neighbors. I mean, the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself, to the first being loving God. Um, <clears throat> so, if you love God, check one, good, brilliant. Check two, is do love yourself, do love your neighbors as yourself. So do love everyone else as much as you love you. And I think that's really important, is that if you love your neighbors as much as you love yourself, then this world can change. Um, and not just church people. Church people are loved, and, and it's important to have them evangelized and supported but also inviting non-church people to to church. I suppose that could be the question, is how, how do I invite strangers to church? Um, <clears throat> through friendship, again. So if, you're, if you only attend things at church, go do something. Go, go do a hobby. Go join the local football club, rugby club, netball club, whatever sport you're into, whatever hobby you're into, whatever you like doing. Go join a club of it. There'll be a group of people that are already doing what you like doing. So just go do it. Like, if you like photography, go take photos with other photographers. They'll probably love it too. So, it can be worth it. And in that, you can show people God. Um, I used to be a part of Coast Guard before I started studying. And I loved it. And the amount of times I brought God up was incredible. I didn't see anyone saved, but I saw interest. And interest sparks... The um, discipleship, the inviting to church, and that sort of thing. So, in that, God can show up. So, evangelism isn't evangelism. Sorry, isn't so much about telling strangers about God, as it is loving your neighbours and and um, discipleship of of your friends and people you know, and even people you don't know. Asking them, so where's where, where's your where's your faith lie? What do you believe in? Um, but if you are if you do get this cool opportunity, which I've had a few times, to talk to a complete strangers, never met them before, probably won't ever meet them again. About God, you don't want to just go. So are you Christian? Do you believe in God? It, it, it's too jumpy. You want to just ask them obvious questions. So if you're on an aeroplane, ask, oh, so why are you going there? Or why are you going to, I mean, you're on an aeroplane, you're going to one place. So why are you going to Auckland? Or why are you going to Christchurch or Wellington? Or wherever you're going, ask why. What, what, what's, what's there for you? And so you've got a conversation starter. So ask the obvious questions. And just, just go from that. Just build that. So if they say, I'm going to Wellington to see family, be like, oh, that's really cool. Is it like a special event, like birthday holiday or something like that and so you're just boarding these questions along and you can just you can ask those people aren't too scared to answer those honestly and once the conversation goes down a little bit more and you're on you've, you've asked their name names are always important once you've done that ask them so what do you believe your purpose is in life now that is the question that often has people the most. I um, When I talk to this one lady on the aeroplane, she goes, oh, my purpose is my children, like, to build them and grow them and make them honest and good good ideals and um, role model in life. And I was like, that's really cool, that's good. We need more children who obey the law and respect elders and all that stuff. But actually, then I said, what happens when your children move out? She goes, ah, oh, Oh, she had this this look on her face. She was just like, a little confused. She's like, I don't know. I don't know. I I don't think I have a purpose. Um. 
And so I'd actually question that she does have a purpose. We all have a purpose. Um, we've all been made in the image of Christ. So we all have purpose. So asking some obvious questions to talk to strangers, to create a trusting relationship, friendship, and then asking, what is your purpose in life? It's a, it's a really good start. Um, but I think another way is just sharing your story. So asking what's your purpose and like, ah, oh, okay. And then most people be, will ask back, what, what do you believe your purpose is? And share it honestly. Don't say, I don't know. If you don't know, say what you're interested in. Say what you would like to do. But say something other than I don't know. We're Christians. We have purpose. Um, yeah, so any questions, comment, any um, topical ideas, comment below. Or email me. Um, yeah, I'm just going to pray before we go. And I'll pray after every video. If I remember, I should. So, yeah. Uh, dear Lord, I'd like to thank you for all the people watching this video and all my friends and family as well. I'd like to thank you for how much you love us and how much you want every child of yours to be saved. I ask that you can bless bless these videos. I ask you can bless the people watching them and uh, help them to, to uh, see you in the dark times and see you in the good times as well, Lord. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. See you guys next week.